So thank you, Dominic, for the introduction. Today I'm here to discuss about why crypto detectors fail. Now we all know that security matters, that's why we are here, and we generally depend on cryptographic APIs to implement our security functionalities, because it's otherwise really easy to mess things up. Now, when you talk about cryptographic APIs, there are a lot of them, and they can confuse an average developer, because they can be diverse and they can be complex. And as we have seen in previous works, it's really easy to mess things up when you are trying to use cryptographic APIs, because if you don't know what you're doing, you might actually introduce more vulnerabilities in your code. Thankfully, we have cryptographic API misuse detectors, or in short, crypto detectors, to the rescue. Um, so for example, Coverity, we probably have heard about it, is being in um, active use by at, at least 38,000 open source developers out there. And surely they work because we have benchmarks. So if a crypto detector says that I have 0% false positive rate and 100% true positive rate against these benchmarks, that's good. So we can all live happily ever after. But that's not the case though. We don't really know what's going on if we only rely on benchmarks. Here's the reason why. Sometimes these um, cryptographic APIs, um, sorry, um, some of these benchmarks can simply be incomplete or incorrect. So for example, the OWASP benchmark included um, DES slash ECB as a secure protocol till March 2020, which until it was reported by an independent developer, it, it was considered secure. So there are several factors at play when we are trying to use these crypto APIs or trying to rely on these benchmarks. The first one is that cryptographic APIs may include, may adopt non-intuitive design choices. So we all know that AES is good for security, but in Java, if you only specify AES without specifying the mode or the padding, it will default to ECB mode in Java, which is bad. Next, cryptographic API usage patterns may vary. So as you can see, the two different patterns, they are expressing the same thing, but they are using different syntax and requires different types of techniques to analyze and to detect. Finally, the skill and intention of cryptographic API user may vary. And depending on how skilled they are or what the intention is, they can express the same types of cryptographic API misuse in different ways. We consider three different types of users based on their skills and intentions in our threat model. The first one is a benign developer. He really doesn't know too much about cryptographic APIs and he will probably misuse these cryptographic APIs. So for example, he will probably write AES in a small case which is not regular in terms of convention, but it's still regardless is acceptable in Java. And of course, it will default to ECB mode. Next, we have the benign developer with a harmful fix, our threat model two, uh, actor two, who is trying to rely on crypto detectors and trying to fix things, but really doesn't know too much about them in any way. So in this case, he will look at the documentation, notice that the convention is to use uppercase and try to emulate that. But essentially what he's doing is that he's not fixing the vulnerability, he's just removing the error. Finally, we have our threat model um, actor three, evasive developer with a harmful fix. And we all know about those kind of developers who are trying to basically shoot themselves on their foot. Um, they are trying to compromise um, their own ads because they don't have the intention to fix things or they just want to do a quick job at their work and be done with that. So they are purposefully trying to evade crypto detectors reports. So continuing with the previous example, uh, a, a T3 developer or evasive developer might try to do something like this. Use method chaining. So what you really need is a systematic approach that can handle the complexities and diversities of the cryptographic APIs, as well as create realistic misuse cases that can help us evaluate these crypto detectors. Because if we, if we try to um, create or recreate these realistic misuse cases, we have to represent the expressiveness of these three different types of developers, the T1, T2, and T3, the benign developers who might try to fix things erroneously, as well as the evasive developer. So in our work, Musk, what we essentially do is really simple. We mutate these misuse cases, we put them or seed them in open source applications, we run crypto detectors on these applications, and then see whether they can kill or not kill those mutants. And based on that, we can detect design or implementation flaws. But that requires answering two different questions. The first one is, what are the misuse? And the second one is, how do we actually mutate those misuse cases? 
To answer that, we performed a systematic data-driven taxonomy generation approach. And what we did is basically we went through academic and industry sources of misuse from, uh, from the last 20 years. And as you can see, that's the taxonomy that we have created. We invested two person months to extract all these misuse from different sources. We catalog cataloged them and we found 105 crypto API misuse. We also semantically clustered them based on their semantic meanings. Now that we have that, this misuse, we looked at the Java cryptographic architecture to understand what the design principles are and what the expected usage patterns are. Based on those, we created usage-based mutation operator. In addition to that, we also created mutation scopes. Mutation scope is essentially putting these mut mut mutations or mutated misuse cases at different locations to understand whether they can be reached by these crypto detectors. So as I previously explained, the rest is really simple. We then uh, we then test these mutated applications using the crypto detectors to see if they're killed, and if they're not, we go more in depth to understand what's going on, and we, so we try, we applied this approach on nine crypto detectors. You probably know about some of them, Coverity, GitHub Code Scan, um, CryptoGuard, and we found 19 previously unknown flaws in these detectors. Based on their properties, we created five flaw classes, and we noticed that some of these flaws are not specifically tied to specific crypto APIs, but more, uh, more likely they are um, based on the usage patterns. So as you can see, for the flow class one and two, they are about the strings and in kind of resolution. The examples are for Cypher, but similar flaws can be observed for other similar crypto APIs, such as message digest, as well as SSL context. In addition to these uh, five flow classes, we found another flow class zero, which is about in kind analysis of the input, right? So what we found is that many of the applications were not being properly analyzed or they were simply not being analyzed completely. And surprisingly, we found some crypto detectors which were ignoring any class which had .android in the fully qualified name. So all the apps at the left side, Twitter, Android, or um, LastPass, they were completely ignored in the analysis process. In addition to that, we also found some crypto detectors which had faulty multi-dex handling. So they were not scanning all the dex files in an Android binary file. I want to talk about three specific flow classes that we found with the help of mask. The first one is flow class two, and as you can see, it's the previous two patterns that I have described. The only difference is that we are introducing a variable, and that was able to evade one crypto detector. In addition to that, we also applied the method training and saw that it also was able to evade some of the crypto detectors. So in total, the eight flaws in this class were able to evade seven out of the nine crypto detectors that we have tested. Furthermore, for flow class four and five, it's about um, insufficient analysis of conditions. So sometimes in, in security specific APIs, we have to define the behavior such as hostname verification or trust um, or, or certificate validation. We noticed that for incorrect um, conditions or infeasible conditions, they are not properly being analyzed by these crypto detectors, even though they can be statically computed. So this, this affected five out of the nine crypto detectors. Now at this point, you might be thinking like, hang on, wait a minute, are they real? Who is going to write the code in this convoluted way? That's a very good question because we also thought the same. So we did an impact study on open source applications in Stack Overflow as well as um, open source applications which are scanned by LGTM assembly. We found that similar misuse cases were found in open source applications everywhere. So all these flaws that we have found has real impact in the real applications. Which brings, back to the, brings us back to the original question, why crypto detectors fail? Because we have the, all these expectations about crypto detectors, but in reality, some trivial cases are evading the crypto detectors. So we try to understand what's going on and try to understand what expectations are set by crypto detectors in the first place. What we noticed is that what we're doing is we're applying a security-centric evaluation. We're subjecting, the, subjecting these crypto detectors to kind of host a review because we expect them to be good when it comes to security. When, when, because we expect them to be used in security-specific settings such as for auditing or for compliance certificates. 
On the other hand, what I found is that most of these crypto detectors, when they were being designed, they were focusing on only the techniques. So they were focusing on whether they can use this particular static analysis technique or not, or at what sensitivity. In addition to that, we found that there is a diverse perspective when it comes to the technique-centric design. For example, Xanitizer team told us that it doesn't matter whether these flaws are found in the wild or not, whether they have real impact in the wild or not as a perception, but rather it's about whether they can be computed statically or not. On the other hand, CryptoGuard and Cognitive said that as long as these flaws are found in the wild, they should be within the scope of these crypto detectors. Surprisingly, that was not the case for GitHub code scan slash LGTM. They said that not only they should be finding these flaws in the wild, they should also be frequently observed to be included within the scope of their analysis techniques. So at this point, we really need to think a bit more about these crypto detectors and how to strengthen them. Because given enough code, developers can be very creative and create very different things based on what they're thinking and what they are trying to do. And it's not just us who actually subjected these script projectors for the first time um, according to host review. Because customers have been doing that for a long time. When they are trying to choose these script projectors, they actually introduce different types of misuse in their own code and try to find out whether the script projectors can detect them in the first place so that they can evaluate these script projectors on their own in their own context. So the reality is that we are focusing more and more on security. And complex legislation as a certificates are on the rise. We are now relying on certificates for IoT, for blockchains. Manual reviews cannot simply scale with all these apps and services because that's going to be too consuming in terms of resources. So we have to rely on automated techniques. And we simply cannot discard or, um, static analysis because dynamic analysis has this issue of reachability. So we have to rely on both of them. So here's the takeaway. First of all, we need a paradigm shift of crypto detectors from technique-centric design to security-focused design. The reason is really simple, because we are relying on them for security-specific purposes, such as auditing or complex certifications. Expressive test cases generated by MASK or evolving frameworks like MASK can help us understand what these crypto detectors are good at, what they are failing at, so that we can make them better proactively instead of observing things in the wild frequently. And we also need to reach a consensus regarding the assurances that are provided to us by these crypto detectors, because if it's not consistent, we don't really know what they're expecting from us, the developers, to assume about their own crypto detectors. So remember that average developer who was very confused if we do all of those, if we follow all the takeaway messages here, he will still be an average developer, but he'll probably be happy, average secure developer, because he'll be able to use more secure crypto detectors. So our entire artifact, including tool logs, source codes, and everything is available in the UI, which you can also reach using the QR code. It's in active development. Um, so it was a blast for me to talk with you about all about this. Um, thank you. I'll be happy to take questions now. All right, thank you so much, Ahmed. Uh, awesome talk. Uh, I especially like the developer representations. Um, do we have questions? Uh, then maybe I'll start one uh, off with one of mine. Um, you mentioned that for the data-driven taxonomy, uh, taxonomy, you included uh, 105 misuse cases. Um, did you have like a favorite among them or like a especially interesting one you want to tell us about? Well, um, the most interesting one that we found was like defaulting to ECB mode when someone was specifying AES. Like no one can assume that, right? But a major language like Java defaulting to ECB mode because it's not being specified, that's kind of mind blowing. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, it's really an interesting case. Thank um, you for the question, yeah. Yeah, awesome answer as well. Um, we have a question from the audience, please yeah. go ahead. So did you notice uh, different detectors failing at different tasks? And if so, could you, in principle, just run multiple detectors and then sort of take whatever, like the union of the results? Um, so can we rephrase the question? Um, so what I understand from your question is about whether we found common flaws in these detectors? Or, or, or actually different flaws. So like if one detector has one flaw, but the other detector doesn't, could mm -hmm. you just run both and then hopefully uh, You'll, you'll find the issue. 
Oh, so um, what we did is when we were testing these detectors, our mutation approach is kind of, um, it's still semi-automated. So we can understand what the different complexities are involved. And based on that, when we progressively increase the complexity, we can figure out what's going on, what the differences are in between these crypto detectors. But some of the crypto detectors are black box as well. So we can't, we can infer, but we can't for sure say that it's, that's what's going on. Thank you for the question. All right, thank you so much. Uh, let's thank Amit again for his awesome talk and his awesome submission.